What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and welcome back to another miniature rescue. Today we're going to take a look at an incredible model from a much loved and dead line of miniatures, the Toon Kings. Since I was young, Egypt has been something of a wonder to me. Like most kids, it holds a sense of mystery and wonder. The architecture, the tombs, and of course, the mummies. Before the end times of Warhammer, there was an army that played right into the hearts of many people and still an army that I always see comments about. It was an army that played into that childlike wonder for many and brought that sense of splendor to a tabletop game where you could create your own stories within that aesthetic. Now I never bought into the army. Sadly, I missed Warhammer Fantasy almost in its entirety because I was focused on other things, like 40k. But today, we are going to take back a piece of that old army and have some fun doing it. A while ago, maybe a few years at this point, time kind of flies these days, I painted a Lich Priest from this army. It was a very enjoyable experience and one that I said at the time that I wanted to have more of and purchase more of the Tomb King's army to make something out of it. Sadly, I never really got around to doing that. Other projects came up and that idea kind of got buried. Today though, I decided to get out an old package from a wonderful subscriber named Casper from Denmark and paint up another miniature for this army. In this package, there are actually two Tomb King models. They are the king and queen of the army and both present some very fun opportunities to paint something exciting. Taking them out and examining them, I wanna get a feel for the models and start to think of the possibilities. The queen, Kalita, needs some work. A little bit of paint stripping and cleanup, but overall, she's in pretty good shape. The king, Kemri, is in very good shape and really wouldn't require much work. We could pretty much paint this right now. Between the two models, I am very much leaning towards Kalita, the queen. Since I have no intention of using either model on the table, I really wanna do something fun to display this model. The cloth that she has draped around her would lend us some thematic basing and that sounds like a pretty fun way to go. To prep the model I'm gonna first need to strip that old paint. I'll be using LA's Totally Awesome in a Sonic Cleaner to really get in there and loosen up that paint. A little bit of brushing with a toothbrush and a soft bristled wire brush will get those harder to reach deposits out of the recesses. One thing that doesn't get enough love in this hobby are pewter models like these. Sculpted with what I think is a proper amount of detail and made for painting. The older models in 40k and Warhammer just have a very unique feel to them especially when it comes to painting, they really stand out to me. I enjoy the fact that the models are generally in one piece. Maybe there are some arms or heads that need to be attached, you know, sometimes. But for the most part, they're meant to be painted as a single model, as a whole. So there's a lot less guesswork in the approach to getting paint on the model. They honestly feel less stressful to paint too while still being something that you can put in some work and make look pretty nice. For Kalita, I want to make a nice display base, but something that I can remove her from if I ever do find a good reason to use her on the tabletop. I did recently paint a good sized Osiarch Bone Reapers army, and an old Tomb Kings model can definitely fit into that in some way. So I may be able to use her as a proxy for something else in that specific army, or even a skeleton, death rattle, undead army, who knows. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's excellent sponsor, NordVPN. Internet security is more important than ever these days. With all the pop-ups and malware, you can never really be too careful. NordVPN's threat protection provides a worry-free internet experience that allows you to browse and download without having to worry about your information being stolen and used by anyone, and your connections will be protected from any unwanted ads and scams. On top of that, you can take advantage of some really cool features, like your virtual location. Did you miss out on that huge digital game sale? Move yourself virtually to a country that still has that game for that price you want. Netflix USA doesn't have that show or movie available anymore. Change your location to a country that still has it so you don't miss out on those last few episodes. It's pretty handy. The point is, NordVPN is a highly trusted VPN service that can help you stay safe and save money online. Head to nordvpn.com slash miniature rescues to get a two year plan with a huge discount plus an additional month for free. It's risk free and comes with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to painting that fantastic Tomb Kings model. 
In order to make a display base that she can be removed from, I decided to use some sculpting clay to make a majority of the base. This is a relatively cheap air drying clay that I got from a craft store. It's easy to work with to make basic shapes. It dries rather quickly and can be sanded once it is actually dry. So I'll build up some clay to make a kind of ridge that she can stand on. Once I have a basic shape, it's as easy as pressing the model into the clay to create a custom slotted base for the model. And more importantly, we can take her out whenever we want. I mentioned that she has a really nice piece of cloth draped around her, and I want to reflect that in the basing as well. I bought this little fake plant at the same craft store when I was picking up the clay because it had leaves that were kind of bendy, pointed in one direction. I can use these to create a little bit of movement on the base by having them all bent over in the same direction as the cloak. So I stuck them right into the clay. They didn't really stick very well, but once the clay is dry, I can use a little super glue to keep them in place. I also wanted to bring in some skeleton bits to maybe make this a little more of a graveside, a special tomb entrance or something. I'm not really sure. But I went through some bits and pulled out a few nice looking skeleton heads and a little shield. I don't want these details to detract from our queen here, so I don't plan on doing much with them, but I think they're going to bring in some nice details and texture to the base. Plus the guy in the back is a nice surprise if you spin that display base around. Once the clay really begins to set up, I can give it a little bit of texture. Seeing as we're focusing on a desert scape, you know, it's kind of Egypt, I decided to cover it with sand. A light coating of glue and the sand will stick down nicely. For color, I want to go pretty simple and muted. Again, trying not to take away from the model once it's done being painted, but bringing in some color that I think will complement what I have in mind and contrast. For the plants, I'm using some of that new army painter air paint. I was out the other day and I decided to buy a few just to kind of test them out. And I gotta say they work pretty well. The coverage is good and the color reached opacity relatively quickly, which is my biggest issue with using Army Painter to mix for airbrushing normally. With the regular Army Painter paints thinned down for the airbrush, you need a few more coats to really get that color to stick. But with these, they actually work pretty well right out of the bottle. I think I'll definitely be getting more of these in the future. So a little bit of teal and green for the plants to bring some life to the base. I follow that up with some brown for the sand with the intention of dry brushing to pick up that texture and using pigments to give it some color. My goal is to create a base that draws your eye towards the middle and has a little bit of color from the model framing it, along with the leaves giving movement that complements the model. The lastest and most bestest thing on this base will be to bring in some of the creepy tomb vibes. If you put crackle medium through your airbrush, and I'll just be using a cheap bottle of folk art, it makes spider webs. This is something I've been experimenting with and I'm pretty excited to use it on this project. Seeing as this is sort of a tomb entrance, grave-like, whatever base, I feel like that spider webs could add a nice touch. This will cover the extra details I added, but it also makes them look even cooler because they're just covered by all these spider webs. They look old and dusty and really bring everything together for me. The webs, on the other hand, are a bit fragile, and if you get water on them, they do dissolve. But for display in a cabinet, they should stick around. <laughs> Moving on to the model. I'm going to be using the same army painter colors that I used on the leaves, so I'll start with a darker jade color and move up to that light teal. For the most part, I'm using the airbrush layer as a guide for brushwork later on. I want to treat it like a zenithal highlight that I can work from to glaze in shadows and highlights. Still, it looks pretty nice right out of the airbrush. I also went in from below with a little transparent purple to begin pushing those shadows and getting a little more color onto the model. Before moving on to brushwork proper, I decided to fill in some of the nice ornate armor with gold. That way I could get a good idea of what the model was looking like and still make some decisions right after that. Next up, we'll take care of the wraps. Since there are a lot of brighter colors on this model already, I'm going to shoot for something a little darker. Scale 75's Arbuckle's Brown has a really nice purple tint to it, and that will play nicely with the shadow color on the cloak, so I feel like that's a good place to start. Something I really appreciate about pewter models like this is how there's really a good amount of detail in here, but not an overwhelming amount. This model was designed so specific details stand out, so there's a nice hierarchy of things to paint. The wraps are more important, the cloak is important and it moves down that list. Of course, modern models still have that sense of hierarchy, but I tend to find it more difficult to pick out which details are actually supposed to stand out. Weirdly though, I do think we are starting to see modern models take a step back from the overly detailed look. Even from Games Workshop, there have been some really nice models released more recently that don't look overloaded by plastic, and you can more easily see where things are supposed to go. 
So the wraps get a base coat and I start adding in ivory to build up that color. I'm not planning on using any washes for these because I want to preserve the color as much as I can. So I'll do some highlighting and then go back with that base color to essentially black line the wraps. A little bit of back and forth, but a much cleaner look than if I had painted them white and then just washed them down with, you know, a wrap color, whatever color that is. The cloak is already looking pretty good to me, but I wanna blend the purple shadows in a little bit better and make the shadows darker. So I'll thin down a mix of that original jade with some of the Arbuckles Brown and do several passes on the shadows. When you're glazing colors in, just make sure to end your brush strokes where you want the color to be the most opaque, the strongest. The more you do this, the darker that color gets and the softer the transitions will be. So just be patient, take your time and build those up. The same thing applies when you're doing the highlights. I'll use the lighter teal and slowly mix in ivory to go over the topmost parts of the cloak in the same kind of way. For me, this is really where painting mini shines. Pushing contrast, layering colors, this kind of middle portion of the process where you can really make decisions that strongly affect the look of the model. If something isn't working, then you can just keep painting and see where it takes you. And even if it doesn't work out, you can just paint right over the top of it with something else. For the snake that wraps around her arms and legs, I want to continue that bright jade theme and get that painted in. I'm also using this color for the belt and scarab details, highlighting them with a thin bit of ivory. Once those details are filled in, I think we're actually getting pretty close to finishing this model. The Tomb King's army is most definitely dead, and I don't think Games Workshop will ever be bringing them back. The fact that Ancient Egypt is a non-controllable theme pretty much ties their hands, especially with things they're doing lately, which is pretty sad. He has such a great theme, and it lends itself to fun models and creative paint jobs. This is way brighter than I normally go on any model, and it makes me want to make things that I wouldn't normally make, like fancy Egyptian bases and spiderwebs. I also find that an army like this can be a vehicle for further research. Much like historical wargaming, you can go deeper into something grounded in real life and learn something from it. Look into the past and discover something that actually happened or see the things that genuinely inspired the sculptors to create the models that they did. And while the Tomb Kings are most definitely officially off the table, that doesn't mean that we can't still honor their legacy and still have fun painting a very nice model. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.